Hello everyone, my name is Chris from Chris Lee's Observable Universe and thank you for joining once again. Today's video will be a short a little quick tip video about how to plan your targets and how to plan your astronomy sessions with Stellarium. First of all, uh, why do we why do we actually need to plan those things? Of course you can uh, take your mount out, take your telescope out and just look at the sky and see <laughs> what's out there currently. But um, as most of the time in astronomy, uh, planning is a good advice and you want to plan your sessions beforehand in order to have the uh, optimum equipment at hand and also to see whether your target is actually worth it uh, with your current um, setup or if you should aim for a different target uh, as well. So currently you can see in the screen uh, for two weeks ago I uh, tried to image the Omega Nebula and uh, this is my result so I did no video on that but um, just a little quick update <laughs> it's more data than the last one from the Veil Nebula but let's uh, start this by opening up Stellarium so let's open Stellarium as I said and Stellarium is an open source program and it's great for playing your astronomy uh, sessions on PC uh, I think it's also available on Mac and Linux systems. So, uh, currently I'm set here for Munich, Germany. And um, it's daytime, so uh, it's the current time here set. And now first off, you want to go into your settings. So, on the top right. And what do we actually want to do here? We want to see whether our target actually fits into our image frame. So typically um, it's depending on your F ratio, so your focal length and your, um, which you can see it here, you can see the focal length and the diameter of your telescope. And then of course also your camera chip is quite important. So if you have like a full frame sensor uh, on big DSLRs, you will have a much wider um, range in the night sky uh, compared to a rather slim and tiny chip. So those tiny chips, for example, are better for planetary um, imaging, whereas the full frame sensors are better for big neb nebulas or for example, also for uh, the Andromeda galaxy. So as I said, we want to go into our settings. And first off, if you have not uh, done this before, you can simply uh, enter your manual um, telescope uh, values here. So for example, here would be a Newtonian telescope. It doesn't matter actually whether it's uh, apochromatic or a Newtonian here. Uh, it's just that you can easy, uh, remember it more easily. And then you just need to enter your focal length. For example, 800 millimeters for my telescope and the diameter of 200 millimeters. And then you could simply click add and you got it right away. Then the second thing um, you need to set up correctly and maybe you need to, to Google that because there are some presets here for some Canon EOS cameras, for example, or some Nikon cameras. Um, but um, for any dedicated astronomy camera or so, you would need to, to enter them yourself, uh, the data. And yeah, uh, Google is your friend for those values. So uh, just check uh, what, what uh, resolution and chip width your camera has. There are some pages where uh, all those information uh, is displayed. And then just enter it here, copy paste and that's it. And yeah, then you have set up your sensor. And one thing to also keep in mind um, could be a lens. So whether you have a Barlow lens to uh, magnify your target, for example, a two times Barlow lens or three times or so on, or you have a reducer. So for some upper um correctors, there's also always a reducer factor uh, incorporated. You need to keep that in mind or it's already incorporated in the telescope data of the focal length and of the uh, diameter or, the, uh, or yeah, in the F ratio, I mean. 
and um, yeah, so also to keep in mind, some coma correctors come with a included reducer or reduce factor as well. So maybe 0.9 or 0.95 or something. So you would also need to incorporate that here and not just the telescope values. But once you've entered all those things, you can close it again and to uh, well, <laughs> actually uh, see anything, I will switch or go forward in time and it was too fast. Let's go back again. Yeah, after midnight. So for example, we see Jupiter here and let's scroll further to the Milky Way uh, region. And we want to see some of the, maybe some bigger nebula, for example. Let's see, puzzle cluster pick a cluster here. Let's go here, Pink Pillow Nebula, for example, or the North America one, it's also uh, well known, actually. And um, yeah, so um, then you could click, I think those, uh, uh, this field will be there automatically, and you would need to switch on your image sensor frame, and voila, we, <laughs> maybe before, uh, we do anything here. Let me click with the, the arrow buttons to see some uh, to see it better. So first of all, let's try to go with a familiar like uh, camera chip, for example, an EOS 450D uh, with an APS-C uh, chip dimension. We also want to take let's search for the Newton telescope here. And let's assume I don't want to use any Barlow lens or uh, some some reducing lens. So uh, we could try to see whether it makes sense to image the <laughs> uh, North American nebula with this setup. And right away we see, well, it's a bit too slim because the nebula is quite big actually, and you need a, a rather flat field um, setup for that. So in theory, we could try, well, um, Maybe let's use something like the Radiant Raptor, which again uh, has a much lower focal, uh, focal length. And uh, we could see that, yeah, for this image frame, it would make sense to go for it. Or another example, we can search it up. For example, here in the search window, we want to have a look at the Andromeda galaxy. Yeah, this combination of um, of sensor, chip sensor and telescope makes sense for that. But for example, let's go with a dedicated astronomy ca camera. Yeah, it would still fit in the picture, but if I would choose my Newton telescope or my aprochromatic, yeah, you, you would see mm -hmm, it's already cropped on the edges. So maybe um, I should switch to a different target. And yeah, for, for uh, things like that to see what kind of targets would be suitable for your telescope setup. Stellarium is a good tool to plan your session. And also, for example, for me, um, I need to look into the uh, actual direction uh, of the sky. Uh, so um, my garden is, or my backyard is set um, to, to the southern side. And I want to see whether I have any suitable targets in that direction if I don't want to move somewhere else. Um, so for example, uh, I could try to image Jupiter um, or, well, let's go with something else. Let's go a bit uh, further back in time. See the sky moving to the uh, east, I mean, yeah. And um, then we have the Milky Way, for example, as, I show, as, as I've shown you previously, the Omega Nebula. I did this with the, uh, no, switched back. Let's search it as a target, then it will stick there. Oh my god, Nebula. So, you can see here, um, I did it with my APO uh, ED, uh, doublet uh, telescope, and uh, the ASI 183. And, well, in theory, I still have some space left in the frame uh, here. And also maybe we could apply a uh, two times Barlow lens. Could theoretically see, well, that may make sense as well. So let's uh, stop it here and then we could see, okay, 
uh, with a two times follow and my camera and uh, telescope setup, it would work. So um, there is that. And yeah, as a conclusion, it's it's uh, important to plan your uh, to plan your sessions beforehand because I previously I've mostly looked at um, the mobile observatory app and checked for any interesting targets, but. Uh, it uh, of course it depends whether it's a, a small planetary nebula or it's a big big nebula or it's a faint galaxy or a star cluster so depending on um, your telescope setup it makes sense to go for your best targets first and uh, then you can get even more equipment no <laughs> but uh, yeah uh, it's, it's good to plan here in Stellarium and if we compare it um, is i183 with my actual picture you can see there's still some place uh, around uh, especially in the upper half here um, of course it's, <laughs> it's not, i think it's five minutes of data if i remember correctly or a bit uh, could be a bit more um, but you would see um, with this setup I do have some space here, so maybe it was not the ideal target, but as it was a bright nebula, it was uh, a good idea to, to, well, actually see something here in the picture. All right, so uh, that's it. Just a quick tip and update. And uh, thank you for joining once again here in my little update video and uh, quick tip video. So this has been Chris from Chrisley's Observable Universe. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye. Chris out.